My name is Madeline McLinden. I am a photography major at the University of Edinburgh, specifically going to the Edinburgh College of Art. And since COVID, I have been stranded here. I am an American student, an international student. And I think I'm the only American in my class for photography, which is definitely weird. Um, interesting, because like I'm that American, American girl, American girl doll. Um, I am from Maryland in the US, which is, um, well, the District of Columbia, DC, I'm only like 45 minutes from there. So I live on the outskirts of a very large metropolitan area. It's been very difficult adjusting to living in a different country. After consulting with our top government health professionals, I have decided to take several strong but necessary actions to protect the health and well-being of all Americans. To keep new cases from entering our shores, we will be suspending all travel from Europe to the United States for the next 30 days. The new rules will go into effect Friday at midnight. I wish I was home. Like, I miss my family. I miss my dog. Like, my cute, cute dog. She looks like a corgi, but she has, like, long white fur and, like, a fox face. And her name's Trish. And she's really cute. Um, super furry. Um, I have a twin sister. She is currently in Maryland. She was going to UCLA, but she came home, um, which I'm not able to do. So... You know, my mom and my dad aren't like particularly happy that like I'm obviously not there with them. And of course they don't want to travel because they don't want to put anybody at risk. Um, because my mom works, at least at home, she works for like the county government. And my dad works, is actually currently working with a company that's, I don't really know his job, but he's working with the company that proposes trials for COVID. He has his PhD in infectious disease. So that's fun, like I get to have like some information, um, not just like the fake news on Google. So like I said, I am studying uh, photography and I'm experimenting with self-portraits. I focus on the nude body um, for a long time I did self-portraits and then I went into photographing other people nude, which is super fun. I still want to do that. Can't do it now. So I've gone back to self-portraits, um, and I use a lot of mirrors. I love, love, love using mirrors and using reflections and, you know, like experimenting with different angles and stuff like that. So focusing on like close-up body work, um, so like the curves of the female body. Um, I use my body, obviously, for self-portraits and, you know, kind of just experimenting with light, different exposures, shutter speeds, aperture, um, all those different types of, you know, amazing things a camera can do um, to try to get different, you know, perspectives and, you know, prints and, like, final images. Um, and it's just experimenting with those techniques. And it's been quite difficult because I can't use a studio at the moment, so I'm, you know, trying to create an atmosphere um, with enough lighting and equipment that I can use to create the images that I want to. Um, and it's, it's not, it's definitely not ideal. Um, it's very, it sucks because as an international student, I have to pay so much money to come here and 
I guess I'm like, I'm just not getting the education that I need. And there's been so many difficulties, like trying to, you know, absorb as much information as possible in my classes. But as an art student, you can't really do much when you're stranded, like in your room. <laughs> It's really, like I said, tough to think about the positive impact. I guess sometimes I like being alone. I don't have to worry about anybody. Um, being an introvert, like, you have, like, with the like, COVID, now you have to, like, stay, like, six feet apart. Well, six feet for me. I don't know how many kilometers it is for you. Like, I, I forget. But six feet. Just six feet. Um, apart from everybody, which is nice because I don't really like being around people. <laughs> Um, so I, I have an excuse like not to chit chat um, with people on the street and just like be on my own and like do my own business. Um, not that I don't like chatting with people. Like one thing I love about Scotland is everyone's very pretty. Everyone, the majority of people are very, very nice compared to where I live. Um, people where I live, you don't talk to people on the street. Like you just don't do that. Unless you're asking for directions, and even then it's still awkward. And they probably will look at you like you're nuts, and then keep walking. So, it was very- that was a different, like, it was a culture shock, really. Going to Scotland and, like, having people be, like, really nice and friendly. Like, I would talk to people on the bus, like, <laughs> going to school, like, I, like, would chat with people, and... Like one time this older gentleman needed help finding his like stop and he was doing, or he was leaving, he was having trouble with where he needed to go. And I was like, oh, you're getting off on the same stop as I am. I'll tell you when. Um, and he was going to like a doctor's appointment. So like he, like we started chit chatting and he told me his entire like story and how he lived in, I think it was a country in Africa for a long time and he was a British man like he was in World War II and he showed me his car like he showed me his military ID that he still had in his wallet and he told me about his wife that you know unfortunately passed so like like weird like stuff like that like that you never that would never happen here unless that person was like crazy and they wanted like money or food from you they'll start like you know chit chatting you um, to me, you know, that, that definitely helps not having to, like, always chit-chat with people, <laughs> which I feel like is, like, super mean to say, but, like, it's the reality, like, that, that's the truth, so, you know, 